So maybe you're tired of road riding or you want to give this gravel riding a go. Over the last year I've had a chance to ride many gravel bikes. In this video I'm going to help you guys choose a gravel bike. I'm going to give you some things to think about when you're looking at your first gravel bike. Welcome back Pathless Peddlers and if you're new to the channel, if you love bikes but aren't necessarily into racing the supple life, then you have found your people, hit that subscribe button. And this video, like all the other videos, is uh, free for you guys to view, not always free for us to make. So if if you like this content, consider supporting it with the links below. So first off, let's get semantics out of the way. I know every bike is a gravel bike and you can ride any bike on gravel. We've ridden on gravel with our Bromptons, with cargo bikes, so yes, I get that point. But for the purpose of this video, I'm going to use uh, the term gravel bike and how it's evolved uh, currently, which is a drop bar bike with clearances for bigger tires. And really quickly, for those of you that can't afford to get a new bike, I totally understand that. I'm going to make a separate video on how you can retrofit your current bike to make it more supple so you can ride on mixed terrain, dirt, gravel, whatever you want to call it. So the gravel bike or the all-road bike over the last couple of years has gone through a pretty interesting evolution. I think many of the early gravel bikes were based around a cross bike design. Since then, it's, it's been re refined. Some features have been added. Some features have been taken away. And as gravel riding becomes more popular, we're seeing lots of different expressions of what we know as the gravel bike. But how to choose, there are so many out there and it seems like every day, every brand is coming out with their own uh, version of the gravel bike. Within this category, there's a ton of variation. There are definitely gravel bikes that are more race oriented and there are gravel bikes that are meant for uh, exploration. So the first big consideration when choosing a gravel bike is actually where you plan to ride it. Gravel, dirt roads, forest roads, B roads, unmaintained roads, depending on which part of the country you live in, which part of the world, has a lot of different definitions. More so than a paved road. You know, generally a paved road is paved, but gravel roads can vary so widely from a uh, very hard pack rideable gravel to dirt roads that turn into super muddy slush piles when, when things get wet to the rockier chundery stuff that we have here uh, in the Pacific Northwest. So the first thing to consider really is what are the conditions of the gravel roads uh, in your area or where you're going to plan to ride it? Because this will lead directly to the next thing to consider, probably the most important thing to consider with gravel bikes, and that is tire clearance, tire choice and wheel size. I know, a lot of things all at once. So if your riding is mostly hard packed and not too uh, muddy, then you can get away with a gravel bike with smaller tire clearances. You don't need something like a cutthroat necessarily, which will fit mountain bike tires. You can get away with a cross bike or bikes that are optimized for that 35 to 40 millimeter tire clearance range. If, however, you plan to go bike packing or, or riding in places where things get super muddy, you want that extra room around the tire so when things get peanut buttery, you can still pedal. Likewise, if you're riding in areas where uh, you know, some of the terrain turns into baby heads, chunder mountain, then you want that extra clearance so you can run bigger tires. Think of the worst possible case scenario that you're gonna ride the bike in and choose the, the frame with the clearance that's the most appropriate. And this leads to kind of the next talking point and that is wheel size. Should you go 700C, 650B, or some kind of multi-tire bike? Generally, I feel like the rule of thumb is that if you're a shorter rider, and by short, uh, I mean somewhere between 5'8 and shorter, riding frames, uh, you know, 52 all the way down to, you know, 48, 46, then you'll probably benefit most from a 650B wheeled bike. And the reason for this is you get that wide tire, big volume tire, without compromising uh, agility and frame fit. Many bikes these days are supposedly multi-wheel compatible, but I found there's kind of a compromise in the riding experience when you switch between 650B and 700C. And this becomes most obvious when you're a shorter rider and you're riding smaller frames. Because if you put 650B by 47 in a bike and 700 by 47, there's actually a pretty considerable drop in overall bike height. So that affects things like uh, pedal strike on the ground in technical terrain. It moves the center of gravity up and down pretty noticeably in my opinion, not to mention things like toe overlap. 700 by 50 millimeter tire in the front, if it's jammed into a small frame, you're gonna get massive toe overlap. So after figuring out the widest tire that you'll probably run or the tire width that you'll probably run the most, the next thing to consider is utility. 
One beautiful thing about the all-road bike or the gravel bike is that many of them have the uh, mounts for fenders, for racks in the front, racks in the rear. Although we are seeing actually less and less of this as gravel becomes more racy, people are stripping away a lot of the utility uh, that was beautiful in the early gravel bikes. But for now, late 2018, you can still get a fun riding gravel bike that's got the mounts. So that's another thing to consider. And lastly, but still very important is how do you want the bike to feel beneath you? Do you want it jumpy and fast or do you want it stable and comfortable? Just like with traditional road bikes, we have that option now within the niche of gravel bikes. As a general tip from my experience, if you like a jumpy bike that accelerates really quickly, responds really well to inputs, you're generally gonna look for a bike that's a shorter wheelbase, shorter chainstay, a chainstay length of 430 uh, down to 420, even 418. I think bikes in the 430 uh, chainstay length are probably the most balanced and those above 430 to the 440, those are a lot more stable feeling in my opinion. Which one is the best is actually really up to you. You would think initially that the shortest wheelbase bike with the shortest chainstay is the best bike for gravel all the time, but actually that's not the case. When we rode through the Kanza this past year, we had the option of uh, the Salsa Warbird or the Salsa Cutthroat. And in the end, we actually chose to ride the Cutthroat because we knew that we weren't gonna compete for the sprint finish and for us, we wanted a bike that was gonna be comfortable, easy to handle, especially when we were tired and exhausted and kind of bleary eyed. So we went for the longer wheelbase bike. For us, for our riding style and our ability, the Cutthroat made more sense than a bike like the Warbird. So that's the rear of the bike. The front of the bike is a whole different story, which uh, I'm, to be honest, I'm, I'm still kind of deciphering because between the head angles and, and offset and trail and mechanical trail and, and pneumatic trail, the front can be challenging to to figure out how it rides just by looking at geometry numbers. There are tools like Bike Trail Calculator, which I'll link to in the description below, where you can put in uh, you know, things like headset angle, fork offset, tire diameter, and that'll give you kind of a number, which I think for the most part uh, is a good indicator of how a bike will handle in the front end. But generally speaking, a lower trail bike will be more lively in the front and a higher trail bike will be more stable feeling in the front. The vast majority of bikes will fall somewhere in between with, with a trail number somewhere in the upper 60s to the lower 70s. So that's a lot to think about uh, in terms of specific bike recommendations. Uh, I'm not endorsing any specific brand here, but I'll just give you from my experience how I think different bikes I've ridden ride like. So if you're looking for a all road slash gravel bike that is fun and sporty, but still has pretty good utility, I would look at a bike like the Surly Midnight Special, probably one of my most favorite bikes of the year actually, except for that ugly ass fork. And if you don't need the clearance and you want a bike with a nicer looking fork, Surly Straggler. Other bikes in that lane would be something like the Otso uh, Wahila S, uh, the review of this bike is coming up soon. If you want that short rear end racy feeling and you want it in carbon but don't need too much tire clearance, then a bike like the Specialized Diverge uh, would be right up your alley. So on the other end of the spectrum, bikes that feel super stable, big tire clearances, I would definitely put the Salsa Cutthroat up there. It comes stock with a 2.35 inch uh, Maxxis Icon tire. We've ridden that bike with that, but also uh, with the Somo Casadero, which is 700 by 50. Awesome tire, makes it a little bit quicker than handle, uh, a little bit less uh, rolling resistance. Other bikes that feel like that, uh, you know, Specialized Sequoia, which we just reviewed, even the, the Breezer Doppler. Let's say you can't make up your mind or you want something right in between, what bikes ride like that? Kona Rove is a great example. I'd say it leans uh, maybe a, a hair or two slightly on the racier side of things, but pretty middle of the road handling. It's also Warbird uh, version four, also middle of the road handling with a lot of utility and it's also carbon, so it's lightweight. Uh, I would say it, if it, it might have a half a foot toward, towards the more stable end. Uh, Velo Orange Polyvalent, also in the middle, has a lot of things I like. It's designed specifically for 650B. It's got uh, you know all the rack mounts, so super uh, versatile. And it's also multi-wheel sa size, but in a different way, because you can run both uh, 650B, 650B by 47 or 26 inch by 2.3. One bike that I absolutely love, which I felt was like uh, a great balance of uh, responsiveness, stability, and utility, is actually the breadwinner uh, G-Road. Not cheap, but you know, if you've got the coin, definitely a bike to consider. So I know that there are way more uh, gravel bikes out there. Uh, you know, I tried my best to, to test as many as I could this year. It's hard to get a hold of certain brands and you know, winter is here. So 
that might be the end of my review season uh, for those kinds of bikes at least. But hopefully uh, I gave you some things to think about, some ideas for uh, future bikes, and I'm curious what kinds of bikes you want me to review next review season. I know I tend to focus most more on the kind of higher end of things, but there seems like there's a demand for more affordable, more accessible bikes, so let me know which brands I should try to reach out to in the comments below, and if you guys have any media contacts, send those along because, you know, I, I send emails, I try to ping people via Instagram, Facebook, you know, sometimes they respond, a lot of times they don't. If you guys have more questions or more ideas for videos around the whole gravel bike thing, leave those in the comments below, and if you like this video, if it help you navigate the waters or if it even confused you even more, uh, consider supporting the channel. Try your best to make original bikey content, uh, so check out those links below. And as always, keep the supple side down.